second class in Render School V-Ray Basics for Maya. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about render quality, uh, as in anti-aliasing and, uh, and sampling. So uh, let's just uh, get to it. I've set up this uh, highly complex scene, um, like uh, pretty much like in, in the previous uh, video, where I've got a, an area light and a couple of uh, objects uh, using the V-Ray frame buffer and showing my render as sRGB. Um, and of course, it's set up to be linear and all that. So uh, let's get started. Basically, uh, I think we should uh, pop up the render settings here. I go to uh, the V-Ray tab, and uh, we have a few things uh, that we're going to talk about today. Um, to begin with, we've got the sampler type, which pretty much uh, defines how how often does V-Ray uh, subdivide and like make sure that sample more to make sure that the image quality is is better. And we have three ways of doing this in uh, V-Ray. Uh, the default one is adaptive DMV, DMC, sorry, which is uh, really, really good uh, for most things. But let's just start with a uh, fixed rate. Fixed rate will basically, for every pixel, sample some amount of uh, times. So set to one, then it's like one pixel is sampled once. You get some some jagged edges. We actually turn off anti-aliasing. That's just gonna make it more obvious. Got some really jagged edges here, and everything's dirty and looks quite bad. Um, can then up this to two subdivisions, which actually means two by two subdivisions. So it's four subdivisions. Um, just take care of uh, or keep that in mind when you uh, when you're up it. So if we set that to four, for example. We actually get 16 subdivisions, and we actually start to get some nicer edges. Uh, we're not really doing anything to the sampling of the light um, with this sampler, but uh, we are getting nicer edges. And like the really nice thing about uh, using fixed is that it's not going to hang somewhere on the image for unknown reasons. It's just going to hammer through. Um, but that being said. I I haven't found much use for it other than, other than when using like glossy stuff all over um, like completely all over the scene and you just want to make sure that everything is sampled really high. But it is like a very basic uh, sampler and and like you can use it to just get something out um, real quick and uh, without any weird hiccups. The I'm actually going to skip down to adaptive subdivision, which is kind of the old school cool way of doing stuff. Um, adaptive sub adaptive subdivision will divide your image into um, uh, squares or some sort of grid, and depending on your settings, this grid will then be uh, well, subdivided up to a certain degree, and then uh, uh, it will look for inside of inside of that um, little box or bucket or whatever you you have. It's gonna sample um, first. I think on minus one, it's like every other uh, grid box. Um, and if it finds that it's very different from uh, the pixel next to it, um, it's gonna sample again up to like this amount of times. Um, and it does a pretty good job, but to be honest, it has been superseded in most any case by the Adaptive DMC, which is the default uh, sampler in V-Ray. And there's a good reason for that. Um, so let's just shoot off a quick render here. The Adaptive DMC will not sample, it, it doesn't uh, split the image up in grids. It samples around the pixels and uh, or sub pixels actually. So for a pixel, it'll shoot off uh, a ray and then uh, basically keep shooting rays up until this max subdivs um, is reached. If it finds enough difference between itself and the pixel next to it, 
Um, so it's it's a really efficient way of doing things. Um, also, it means that, for example, you can see here that the light is or the shadow is quite uh, noisy, and we can actually use um, the image sampler, uh, the adaptive DMC, to to clean that up. So if say I set this at eight, and let's just do a reach in here and hit render, it actually starts cleaning it, cleaning it up because it sees that there is this um, different difference uh, in, in pixel values um, and it needs to sample more. So it's kind of like sample sub-pixels between just to see, well, should this really be different or shouldn't it? Um, and however big that threshold is, is set here. So if we set this really low, it will um, clean it up again a lot more. It will keep sampling until the difference between pixels is less than this, or it has reached a maximum amount of subdivisions. I hope that kind of makes sense because like the the higher this value is, the quicker and dirtier your image is going to be. Um, and the lower you set this, the prettier it will get. As such, and of course also slower, um, because it will keep subdividing up to this uh, max subdivs value. So there is um, this one school of uh, V-Ray rendering, I think it's called the Universal Settings, where you set your max subdivs to, sorry if you can hear the train outside, it's a bit warm here, um, you set your max subdivs to something like 100, and then control everything by controlling your threshold. And it's a really good idea, but it's not always very efficient. Um, because sometimes something will happen and you will actually get to your 100 subtips and, well actually you won't because your render will probably never finish. But it's, it, it's really good for well, being a universal way of setting stuff up. And I like using the same thing with a variation of like never going over 10 or 12 max subtips um, and then controlling your your quality with this threshold um, and you can see it is actually cleaning stuff up really really nicely without us changing anything on the light so in most cases I'll never go over six in the max subtips um, because there are other ways of of controlling render quality. But Adaptive DMC is definitely your go-to guy um, to get some nice renders without um, spending ages cleaning or setting up stuff and, and fixing and all that stuff. So, uh, well, you can do the universal settings like this. Uh, just be a little bit wary about it because uh, it, it, it can go crazy. But uh, the Adaptive DMC also has some stuff you can set over here in the Settings tab. First of all, Time Dependent. Um, it does this pattern of, of uh, shooting out rays to see whether or not it should sample more. If, if this is unchecked, it will be the same pattern every time. And if you're rendering a still image, that's fine. But on animation, that means that what will otherwise look like a big a mix of, uh, of noise and and film grain will all of a sudden just look like a dirty lens because you're going to have this pattern stamped across your images, which is horrible. So always check this guy. Adaptive amount. Um, so the next thing down here uh, basically controls how much of the image uh, quality should be controlled by this and how much should be controlled by the values on your shaders and your lights. So if I go ahead and select this guy, uh, our light, you can see we have subdivs here in sampling. Eight is a little bit low, um, but if, if, if this was at zero, it would just grab this value. If it's at one, it would completely ignore it and just use uh, sampling or the DMC sampler to figure out how many samples you need. And again, that's um, that's a very 
nice and simple way of doing things, uh, and it can get a little bit dangerous because you are giving away every bit of control. Um, so I'm I'm really not that big a fan of, of going 100% uh, adaptive DMC on it. I like doing something like 0.9. So if I know that this light is uh, relatively large and um, it's, it's gonna create some noise, I'll up my sampling subdivisions. Um, actually, don't be too afraid of it. Um, it's not gonna uh, be too slow. Like 32 is actually a pretty decent uh, sampling amount in my eyes. And as you can see here now, we've managed to clean up a lot of this stuff. There's still a bit left here, but uh, that could just as well be because of the uh, uh, adaptive DMC settings. So you can do the whole universal boom, 100% adaptive thing. Uh, but again, it's nice to have a little bit of control uh, if you've got very glossy surfaces as well, or non-glossy surfaces. Um, so soft reflections and refractions, it is nice to be able to control some of it at least um, by setting the sampling on, on those particular uh, attributes. Uh, adaptive threshold works kind of like the threshold we've got uh, over here. Um, when should it be adaptive? When should it switch to this guy? Um, and adaptive min samples. Basically, if I had this at eight, uh, and I, I hadn't done anything to, I think eight is pretty much the default for everything. Um, but I just knew that I wanted to bump up everything. I could keep this at eight and then say, well, the minimum of any uh, attribute that, that has a, a sampling subdivision in it should be 16. So it's going to bump that up. If, if it was at 32, it wouldn't change it. It would just, uh, it just wouldn't allow anything to be less than 16. So again, that's a nice way of just really quickly upping your render quality. And last but not least, we have our subdivisions multiplier. So set this guy back. If I have everything at eight or 32 or whatever I have it at, but I realize that I need to get some more sampling in there, I can actually multiply every every place it says uh, sampling uh, subdivs um, with say two or by two. So that too is a uh, is a pretty efficient way of just upping your render quality. Or not efficient, easy, uh, I'd have to say. So we're getting this cleaned up quite a bit. So that is uh, that's pretty much the uh, the sampling settings. I I would prefer definitely to keep this stuff at like one and eight. Set my adaptive at somewhere around 0.9. Um, keep time dependent on, and then use uh, a soft version of the uh, universal settings here. Um, very often, if you need to go up to 100, uh, there ought to be some other way of uh, of avoiding that uh, by by upping your sampler quality on your shaders or, or whatnot. So we'll just keep that at one and ten, and then use the threshold here to uh, to control the quality. Um, see now if we up it. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it it cleans it up. Um, quite a bit. So the next uh, quality kind of feature we need to have a look at is the anti-aliasing filter. And anti-aliasing basically means that every, every time I render a pixel I'll have a look at the area around it and uh, in some way uh, filter those images so you don't get, you see because we've been rendering without it on, um, I don't know, whoops, how obvious it is, but we have a lot of like stepping here. Um, and if we just render this area uh, with the standard area 1.5, it cleans up a little bit. We are zoomed in quite a bit. Um, that will pretty much just soften out things. Uh, the higher you go, 
the softer that will get. Whoops. Um, I hope you can see that. Um, so it's kind of like blurring while rendering, um, but in a smarter way than just blurring. It, it is, if you want to get crisp images, uh, don't go this high. Uh, I must admit, I don't know all of these by heart, but I've, uh, after many years of doing this, I've come to the conclusion that uh, anti-aliasing uh, set to Gaussian with a size of two pixels has at pretty much any time given me the best results because it's, it's a trade-off that doesn't introduce any artificial sharpening um, and pretty much just renders stuff out the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it is a little bit soft, but most things are, so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can always uh, lower it if you need to get something really crisp out, so go like uh, 1.2. But the beautiful thing about using Gaussian is that it doesn't really break your image. Uh, it doesn't come up with uh, any of its own uh, sharpening or uh, softening filters. Um, I think it is Lankus and Cook or Catmull that uh, that sharpens the image and it looks kind of cool, but uh, for many intents and purposes, uh, it will actually break the image more than it will save it. So I would I would much rather do a Gaussian, maybe at a, at a lower uh, anti-aliasing size, because um, we can always sharpen in uh, in Nuke after the fact. So. That was a really quick little run through of the uh, sampler types and anti-aliasing settings. Um, again, if you want to do the very popular um, universal settings or near horse settings, um, set your subdivs. Max subdivs pretty high on the adaptive DMC. Use your threshold to control uh, the quality and, and speed you uh, you want. Again, like if we up this, it's going to be terrible to look at, but it's going to be really quick. And inside of your settings, get time dependent checked. Uh, the right way of doing it would be to set adaptive amount to one. Again, I'm a little bit uh, anxious of, of doing that. I'd, la I'd rather have some control myself, but it's up to you. Um, but like the complete uh, adaptive way is doing it like that. And uh, I hope that somehow uh, makes you uh, understand what what these things about are about, um, so that we can continue on to the next video. So uh, please head on over to uh, renderschool.com and sign up for the newsletter letter so that uh, you can keep track of uh, of what new videos are coming out. I'm trying to push as many out as possible. Um, so go there and sign up and uh, I will keep you posted whenever something new comes out. So till then, have a good one.